Okay, so this is um, the next step in uh, experiment 1.7 where instead of using um, a potentometer down here in the lower frame, I'm using the capacitive sensor from experiment 1.2, um, and I, which I didn't, I didn't document very well, um, and so here it is again, and I'll document it better. So essentially, um, here's the capacitive antenna, um, the capacitive sensor, so to speak, and then here's the send pin coming out of pin 4, and then here's the receive uh, pin at pin 2, and then in between is uh, about a 13 mega ohm resistor, and um, the, um, the capacitive sensor is on the receive side, um, so that when again just to reiterate what I talked about in 1.2 is that what what this is doing is when there's stray capacitance on this sensor here it changes the voltage and then what the cap sense um, code tries to do which is um, a library done by Paul Badger um, essentially what it's doing is is it's 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 tying it's recording the time it takes for the voltage between the receive and the send pin to equalize um, and that's dependent that's um, proportional to how much um, capacitance is on on this sensor over here so um, so again instead of using the potentometer this time we've attached the capacitive sensors where we want to go with the overall experiment one um, and then what it's doing is it's taking um, the 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 values that the code is producing for the cap sense um, from um, the receive pin or uh, well, again the differential in time and um, mapping that to our uh, pin nine uh, which then goes into our first order filter to our amplifier and then um, we can then measure so let's see if we can get these both in frame here um, so up here we have the voltage. It's hovering right now around, you know, a half a volt. Um, but as I, over here, as I change the capacitive sensing, I can, there's three and a half, five, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, try and get really close, fourteen. And then pull back out again. So again, we've, I don't think you could read it, but um, again, I set the rails at about 15 volts, the power, the single, single uh, power to the LM358 so that this won't ever get over, you know, 14 and change. Um, but um, yeah, it's a little jumpy. So what I might try and do when I um, I won't show the I have serial output showing me the cap sent sent um, arbitrary values and um, they're pretty they're pretty jumpy. So well, there's a couple things that I can do. One, I can add the capac uh, a capacitor to ground on I forget which pin, but um, the documentation recommends that that helps stabilize the values. Um, I mean, I can I can hold it okay. I mean, here's around eight, but it, you know it hovers pretty decently between. Well, it's also hard to hold my hand still. But even even so, um, I definitely have to stabilize. Another thing I could do is use the averaging array that uh, try to use it anyway. Um, that was used on the EMF sensor um, on the capacitor values. Uh, another interesting. Um, thing that will need to be worked out is that right now I'm because th these values can be as high as you know 20,000 like if I touch it for example um, they could be high as high as 20 to 30,000 again arbitrary units but um, th what I'm doing is mapping um, not 20,000 but since looking at the code like this is you know I, it's around 1100 when I get super co close so what I've done is I've mapped off of pin 2, uh, 0 to 1200 to 0 to 255, as I talked about in the last video, because so, that's the, the range for um, the pulse width modulation 
um, in terms of its its output. Um, so and it, once I go over 1200, it's it's pretty arbitrary because the code doesn't know what to do. Um, I could do like an if then statement or maybe a switch case in in which I um, like over a certain amount, I just tell the code to, to output whatever my visualization is, just output that I've touched the sensor because essentially I have. Um, and then under anything under like 1200 or whatever can be, um, can use, use the, the voltage that's being read here. Well, technically when I do experiment one, it'll be reading, um, these, these electromagnetic sensor, um, Readings. I'm sorry. Emitters will be outputting based on on the amplification. Um, the that when I'm you know what I'm interested in is not really touching it because that just puts it you know through the roof. But the the continuous analog values as I come closer, I I'm looking for them to be proportional to the the strength of the electromagnetic field. But again, as I touch it, and it, you know, orders of magnitude of capacitance are <laughs> shot through the roof, um, I could just, you know, like, pin this at some upper rail and, and have code that have some sort of visualization indicating that, that a capacitive sensor was actually touched. So I think that's uh, pretty much it for now.